Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, my dear sisters and brothers, to this feast of the great founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola, of the Jesuits. You are familiar with the Jesuits because of Saint Francis Xavier. He's among the first Jesuits. He came to India as the first Jesuit missionary and he really set the world on fire. After Saint Paul, he has been a great missionary. But who has been his inspiration? Saint Ignatius. Why, what happened? Ignatius was a very worldly man. But when Jesus called him, and he calls every one of us, then we must only give ourselves to him, and he transforms us, reforms us, and conforms us to him. A lot of things have happened through St. Ignatius, a great founder who gave a very apostolic orientation to religious life. We are very grateful because many of us are in touch with Jesuits and they are known for spiritual direction, they are known for bringing clarity, they are known for education of all kinds. So let us thank the Lord for the Jesuits and please pray for us as you have always done and we assure you of our prayers. But at this moment, let us ask the Lord to be kind and merciful to us and to forgive us our sin and to make us once again reoriented in him through his word which we will listen very soon. Let us join our hands and let us ask him pardon. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have I greatly have really sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in, and in my words, words in, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God, our loving Father, have mercy on us all, his children, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now that we are made clean, let us ask him to forgive us and make us strong in him.
us pray you have many intentions and we know that there are many of you who are celebrating your birthdays we keep you all in our prayers and pray for you and there are many other intentions besides that all of them are in our hearts and we raise them all up to the Lord through this prayer to Saint Ignatius O God of all wisdom and understanding who bestowed Saint Ignatius with the gift of truth and discernment, grant that we, your servants, imitating his discipline for seeking the divine will, may constantly follow it when found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all the day long if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name there is in my heart as it was a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I'm weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our response shall be, taste and see that the Lord is good. Our response, taste, taste and see that the Lord, the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord, my soul shall make its boast. 
the humble shall hear and be glad. Our response, taste and see that the Lord is good. Glorify the Lord with me. Together, let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terror, he set me free. Our response, taste and see that the Lord is good. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your face not be abashed. This poor man called. The Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. Our response, taste and see that the Lord is good. The angels of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. Our response, taste and see that the Lord is good. Revere the Lord, you his saints. They lack nothing, those who revere him. Strong lions suffer want and go hungry. But those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. Our response, taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Do all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please all men in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved, be imitators of me as I am of Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to, to you, O Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Oh, what king, going out to wage a war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousands to oppose the one who comes against him with twenty thousand? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, 
he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, when God creates us, he has a plan for each one of us. And we discover that plan somehow. Some may be still not very clear, but many, by chance, they come across something they like and they become good in it. Whatever and however it may happen, but they're good in something. Some are very best in it, some are mediocre, but good in something or the other. Ignatius, too, was good at chivalry. And he wanted to be a famous knight. That was his dream. And that is how he trained himself. But God had another dream. He lets us fulfill our dream for some time. And then he knocks us off or gets us back to what he has in mind for us. That's what happened to him. At the age of 30, he began to understand all these things. Of course, earlier, he had an experience. A cannonball, while he was trying to get a few men of men to fight the French, it hit him on the leg, dislodged him, he fell. But the French were very kind to him. And they mended his leg a bit and took him home. While he was convalescing, he wanted to get back to his old life. But then God brought in something else. He brought in two books in his life through his sister-in-law. But he was not in it. But she kept it there. Finally, he took them up. Resistant though he was, yet he took it up and found it very interesting because... There was chivalry of another kind. What, was these, what were these knights? Dominic and uh, uh, Francis of Assisi. They were a different kind of knights. Uh, he started, you know, with these kind of dreams. And the dreams of chivalry outside in the world. And he noticed something. That while he has these ones, chivalry for... God, it was much more lasting, while the other one died off. And slowly he began to find, ah, this is where God is leading me. Now, there are three things that finally after his whole formation in this life happened. He came up with three important conclusions or precepts. One is, tantum quantum. You use things in so far as they help you to the end. This became very clear to him. So whatever it was, in his choice, it was very simple. Does it help me in so far as it doesn't help me? Okay, out. There was another one. Ajre Contra. There are certain moments when, you know, you want to do something. And you want to find out really if this is what it is, you do the opposite. You think the opposite. Then you come to a balance. Otherwise, you are not detached, as the readings are telling us today. The third reading is saying, if you do not denounce, you cannot be my disciple. And the third thing is, once I know what God wants, then I give my 100% totally in it. Full swing, marches. What is the end of these three precepts of his or principles the end is the greater glory of God you see before he experienced Jesus he was living for his own glory good but now he sees that it is not my glory it is God's glory that I must live for God has put me into this world to know him 
to love him and to serve him. And how do you do this? By being internally free so that you can use things in so far as they help you. Tantum quantum. And if I'm, you know, one track, then get back to the other side so that a balance can take place. And once you know what God really wants, plunge yourself fully into it for the greater glory of God. Simple, isn't it? The readings are telling us that when God calls us, first reading, you know, he puts his seed into us, his fire into us. And when we speak these things out or, you know, act according to it, people will be against us. They will shun us. They will not want us. Neither can we stop it. And sometimes we have to tell it. Maybe we learn from God how to do it. For the greater glory of God, learn to attract them. As St. Paul says, be imitators of me and follow me in my whatever I'm doing, not done for myself, but done to bring God the greater glory. So my dear sisters and brothers, let us be shrewd. And this shrewdness will come to us as soon as we are internally free. Then we can be disciples of Jesus. And he will lead us and we will follow him and we will be very happy because there's great peace, joy, tranquility, the tranquil internal being. Then what happens to us? We can see God in all things and all things in God. This is heaven on earth for the greater glory of God. Let us spend a few moments trying to see how as the Lord himself has told us, be in me as I am in you. And that will do everything for us. Let's hold our hands together, place them in our lap, keep our back straight, close our eyes. And as we breathe in, we are being filled with Jesus in our body, in our mind, and in our spirit. Everything is inebriated with him. Let us empty it all out in him, the good, bad, ugly. And when we empty ourselves in him, we die to ourselves. <clears throat> but <clears throat> we rise again in Jesus. And that is how we live Jesus in our life. We live the Paschal mystery, dying and rising with him at every breath. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us this great principle of being completely imbued with you so that you can work in us and use all our gifts to bring you the glory. Let us now all open eyes and profess the faith that we have so that we can deepen ourselves in it. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus has told us to ask, and you will receive. Knock, and you will find the door will be open to you. Search and you will find it. At this moment, through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier, may we ask God and he will grant it to us. So let us place a few of our intentions to the Lord. The first Jesuit Pope may continue to give servant shepherd leadership to the flock of Christ 
and may be an imitable model for church leadership and leadership in the world we pray gracious lord hear us we pray for world leaders that the holy spirit touch their lives through the intercession of saint ignatius and may make them persons dedicated to the well-being of the people they serve we pray gracious lord hear us we pray we offer you children and youth of today as gifts to be groomed for the world that is changing so rapidly that they may be emotionally and realistically formed to lead the upcoming generations according to your plan we pray gracious lord hear us we pray the covid-19 pandemic has assured in a new perspective of dealing with time relationships work study government education etc may humanity be graced to benefit positively from this outcome so that we may become a more huma humane society and live caring and sharing for one another and creation as brothers and sisters of one global family we pray gracious lord hear us we pray that the jesuits all over the world may live inspired and act like jesus in our present times we pray gracious lord hear us we pray my dear sisters and brothers this is time for your personal intentions gracious lord hear us we pray and let us pray for the world especially during this time when we are struck down by the coronavirus pandemic almighty and merciful god who show your love to all creation everywhere hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world we come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice and offering of ourselves and our prayers may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Take, Lord, and receive bread and wine, gifts of your goodness, which through the power of the Holy Spirit will become the body and blood of your Son, that through these fruits of your saving work we may advance along the way of love and unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For among the members of our society, of whatever grade or position, age or ministry, you have raised up many saints and blessed, along us, allowing us the joy in this life of contemplating even now the holy city, the new Jerusalem, which is our mother. Therefore, all creation on heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With Jesus, when we pray this prayer, everyone gets healed. They get what they ask for, united to Jesus, keeping all of these intentions in mind, especially those we are praying for in a special way today. Let us now be filled with His Spirit and say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. United to Jesus, let's turn to each other in our homes and give them the peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us at this moment receive Jesus into our hearts spiritually and say this prayer to him. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to re receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Through the power of the sacrament, O Lord, strengthen your servants in seeking your will, that we may prize it above all things, following the example of St. Ignatius, and be found joyful in consolation, and steadfast in the midst of affliction, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, my dear sisters and brothers, for praying for all the Jesuits and for all your intentions. May all of you have a great day today, the Jesuits celebrating the feast of their founder and father, St. Ignatius. And for all of you who are celebrating your birthdays, may you have a great time. May the Lord protect you and guide you and grant you all your heart's intentions. We will now receive the final blessing. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who created you to praise, reverence and serve him by loving him above all things and all things in him, sustain you by the particular grace to be faithful in your calling. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who desired our Holy Father Ignatius, to serve him under the banner of the cross, call you to follow him and make you faithful servants of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who inspired St. Ignatius and his companions to serve the church, even to the farthest ends of the earth, lead you to the reward promised to faithful laborers of the gospel. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the joy and peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Noble Knight, leader of the brave array, lead us on, oh lead us on. We will fight neath thy sway, neath thy sway. God to faith and thee, true to thee. Lead us on gallantly, ever on valiantly, in thy banner to fight for the church and its right. All for God's own greater glory is our cry, our battle cry. Not for gain nor in vain is our strife in this life, but for Stronger and stronger as fighting lasts longer and purer and purer To make heaven surer with crosses and trials To many denials will stop but to die Ever loyal and true to our King on high Ignatius lead us on till we die I wish you all a very happy feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola Thank you.